Welcome to today's Research Business Daily Report, where serious researchers come for news insights and commentary about their industry that they just won't find anywhere else. Today we're going to discuss several insights published by The Hill about how to generate more accurate polling. And clearly it has to do with asking one key question, but not one that you've heard a lot about before. RBDR is sponsored today and this week by Decision Analyst, which integrates analytics into its portfolio of research and consulting services. And at the end of today's video, we'll tell you how you can access a Decision Analyst white paper that compares different segmentation approaches. The Hill is one of Washington's most read political media. And on Tuesday, it published how to improve polling, ask voters who will win. The headline really puts it in proper context. Written by the leader of polyvote.com, Andreas Graef, this is a project that is evidence-based election forecasting. And it builds its case based on the new CNN ORC presidential poll that came out this week that, surprisingly for some, put Donald Trump ahead of Hillary Clinton in a nationwide poll 45 to 43. Graves suggested that there's a better way to assess whether the CNN ORC poll or any other poll is as accurate as it could be. And the key, he asserts, can be as simple as asking just one question. And that question is, who do you expect to win? In the CNN ORC poll, the one that has Trump ahead 45-43, when the same respondents were asked, who do you think is going to win the election? 59% of them said Clinton, 34% responded Trump. Grave stated that pollsters really include the expectation in their surveys, which he says is unfortunate. Quote, given that people's aggregated answers are among the most accurate met methods for predicting election outcomes, end of quote. Graves says he has analyzed the relative accuracy of the expectation question against actual presidential election results for the last seven U.S. presidential elections, that's 1988 to 2012. He then compared those results to predictions that used four other established methods to forecast, traditional intention polling, prediction market polling, expert judgment, and fundamentals-based modeling, those developed by political scientists. Citizens' expectations provided more accurate forecasts of election winners in every situation, and the final vote shares as well, all against those other four benchmarks. Now, I found most interesting what Grave had to say about his reasons for expectations providing more accurate forecasting. The bottom line, quote, expectations incorporate more information that, than intentions, end of quote. Well, what did he mean by that? First, at the very least, each expectation captures the respondent's own voting intention. Further, Grave claims that expectations also capture information about other people's intentions, for instance, awareness of polling results and or some idea about the voting intention of their friends, family, colleagues, etc. Grafe added that the information from expectation polling can arguably include impressions about those who do not vote or won't reveal how they're going to vote or even are undecided. And he theorized that people who answer the expectation question are less subject to wishful thinking. Expectations are, according to Grave, quote, more robust, less extreme, and rarely change. Wrapping things up, Grave stated that journalists, who, if they would focus more on expectations-based forecasts, could increase the quality of their campaign coverage. But maybe, and here's what I suspect may be in play, more accurate polling would make the election result a lot less interesting right now, and certainly less compelling. It would dampen viewership and readership for the television and for the newspaper industries. And most important to media, it would really probably cut back on a lot of advertising. That's your Research Business Daily Report, sponsored today and this week by Decision Analyst, which integrates analytics into its portfolio of research and consulting services. Decision analysts Elizabeth Horn and Wei Wang invite you to read their white paper. It's entitled Comparison of Segmentation Approaches. 
We've got the link for you in the email that goes out to our subscribers, and it is also in the description box underneath today's video report. We hope you have a great research day and that this weekend is a great one for you as well, and that we'll see you back here with us on Monday.